Hello, my darling little nieces and nephews. Your dear old Uncle Otter is back, and frankly, better than ever. Yeah, I may be going through a messy divorce, and perhaps my Subaru dealership is sounding off as death rattles, but at least I have the most important thing right here. No, not family. Fresh new Grim Dawn builds for you to stuff right into your flavor hole. But before we dive into this saucy little build, almost 90% of all people who watch my content are not subscribed. So, as a special incentive, everyone who subscribes will receive 100 Otterbucks directly placed into their Otter account. Otterbox not a real currency, simply wait for an almost new set of man to tell you that you love you and always have. So you think especially when only else other than you see yourself. Otterbox can be exchanged for almost all the With that being said, let's do the damn thing! The Naren Kerr Witchblade is an interesting melee fighter, as the core of the build is about capitalizing on power windows. The absurd amount of damage this build is able to dish out comes from three incredibly potent chaos damage buffs in the form of Dying God, Abomination, and Naren Kerr's amplified fighting form. The tankiness in this build is in part due to the Soldier Tree offering up a metric ton of flat and scaling health, allowing us to reach absurd health totals and the Occultist Tree offering up a heaping helping of damage reduction. While this build does stunning single target damage, it lacks entirely in its ability to deal consistent AoE damage, so keep that in mind. The build around item here is of course Naren Kerr's Blade. While dual wielding, you get a huge amount of flat chaos damage while your fighting form is active, and a cool 4 additional seconds to capitalize on that bonus damage to make it all the better. It also makes your weapon pool skill Markovian's Advantage hit like a pure chaos truck. The ideal prefixes and suffixes for this weapon are Demonic and of the Cabal, of the Abyss, or simply of Alacrity for more attack speed. We complement these bad bad blades with a full set of Razin's Torment, the premier chaos auto attacking set. While this set gives us a ton of great stats including flat and scaling chaos damage, the big prize here is a new default attack, Touch of Chaos. We use this instead of Cadence so we can go all in on our incredibly buffed weapon pool skills and use the points we would have used for Cadence towards other worthy abilities. The key devotions in this build are Ghoul. Since we're an auto attacking based character, the pseudo circuit breaker is uniquely strong and very necessary. Dying God for the crazy high chaos damage scaling, total speed, and critical damage, Abomination for a silly high flat and scaling chaos damage boost, and finally Soleil's Witchblade to shred chaos resistance. In the Occultist Tree, we go all the way to the end for the powerful Possession, which we will overcap in order to get the most out of its scaling chaos damage buff, and more importantly, the percent damage absorption. Soleil's Witchfire and Second Right are a great offensive buff, giving us everything we need including flat chaos damage, scaling chaos damage, and attack speed. If you've watched any of my build videos before, you know that overcapping Blood of Dreeg and Aspect of the Guardian is an absolute must due to the buffs it gives and the on-demand heal. One point, the Bloody Pox and Wasting gives us a powerhouse devotion proc that shreds offensive ability. Finally, since Rosin's Force set gives Curse of Frailty the ability to shred chaos resistance, put one point into it and vulnerability so it can also shred defensive ability. In the Soldier Tree, we go all the way to the end, not for any particular skills, but simply because a soldier base level gives us a ton of physique, which is huge. The three most important skills in this entire tree are clustered right there at the top. We overcap both Markovian's Advantage and Zolhan's Technique, since our weapon pool skills are the star of this build. Right below them, we overcap Fighting Spirit, simply to capitalize on the bonus 4 second window from our swords. Military conditioning is what allows Soldier to get such nutty health pools, so it of course gets overcapped. Field Command with Squad Tactics gives us a solid mix of offense and defense including the often overlooked armor stat, an important stat for this build. War Cry with the Terrify modifier gives us our source of flat resistance reduction, meaning we don't have to go out of our way for a devotion like Revenant in our already hyper competitive build. Finally, Blitz and Blindside make for a solid addition to our battlefield mobility. The outstanding single target DPS and surprising resilience of this build makes it a boss killer. In spaces like Crucible, your best bet is to identify your biggest target, then leap on them and take them out first, trusting your circuit breakers to carry you through. Take advantage of the movement rune upon Rylock's wings to initiate with a decent chunk of upfront chaos damage while shredding an impressive bit of defensive and offensive ability. Finally, keep an eye on your buff bars, as the availability of any of your three core buffs, most importantly fighting spirit, can mean the difference between melting your baddie or just slogging it out with them. As always, I'm Armored Otter, one of Time Magazine's most dateable vagrants and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider coming by my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash armoredotter with a U, to see me do stuff live five times a week. Or consider joining our Discord, where I'm available to answer questions or pop off my shirt and take a selfie. You can find the link in the description. You can help this YouTube channel by liking the video you just saw and subscribing to see much more subpar content.